welcome to the series on managing emerging technologies. This is the final in the four-part series from the S-curve, the height curve, the KSM. And this, in this part, we're going to talk about the ecosystem. Well, let's revise and recap what are the three parts that we learned. Performance, S-curve, real performance being tracked, the new emerging technology eventually will replace, disrupt and destroy the current paradigm. Then we look at the height curve, where actually the S curve is still there, but there are irrational exuberance. When there's an innovation trigger, people just go into it, and there are many examples, dot com, blockchain, AI, 3D printing. Tons of examples, which means it's a phenomena that will happen in all emerging technologies. So we've got to be very careful in identifying the hypes. Then we talk about the technology adoption life cycle. The emerging technology got to go into the market and say, OK, that's how we delete, uh, segment the market from innovators, early adopters, to the later market called the early majority and the late majority. And what we're really interested in is to make sure that we enter the mainstream market. However, we talk about KSM, and that is where the late market and early market are quite different. And therefore, Jeffrey Moss says, OK, there are many options here, many happenings, and therefore, you have to choose some strategy to cross the chasm, mainly the bowling pin strategy. All right. Now, beyond the chasm, we also must be very careful when the, how fast does the technology replace the O. That's the timing part of it. Well, the simplest way is, of course, to use the S curve. When there's a point here, at this point, the, the new technology, the emerging technology, the performance is better than old technology, and it actually replaced. That's simple. However, it is when we start looking at the ecosystem, then things look very, very different. All right. So let's take as one example. Right. So the solid line here, there's a creative destruction. Performance is better than existing paradigm or existing S curve. You kill the existing products. However, you should, can also see that actually the, uh, the, uh, the existing curve can stretch because of the ecosystems, and therefore the, the, it will actually slow down the adoption. So the adoption of the new technology will be at a longer time. All right? So the existing ecosystem can actually prevent it. Eventually, however, it will be taken over. It's called illusion of resilience. Resilience, but it actually will be taken over, but it just dragged the time. There's possible options that when the new S, new S curve comes in, then the existing S curve could have, because of the ecosystem, actually continue to improve its performance, actually improve its performance here by combining other, other technologies and using the ecosystem, and there's a robust coexistence, and which actually the new technology takes over. And of course, then the combinations allows us to look at this and maybe stretch a little bit more to have robust resilience. The question then is what is really is this, right? So they are looking at how we analyze. Let's look at quadrant one. Quadrant one is the illusion of resilience, status followed by rapid substitutions. Okay, I think. Uh, so, so this is quadrant three. So GPS versus paper maps, right? Paper maps still exist, but eventually nobody used paper maps. High definition TV, MP3 players versus the CDs. Okay, and the quadrant one, there's no need for explanation because it's a very fast uh, uh, sort of replacement. Quadrant two, when you talk about robust coexistence, and we can see that actually in where, right? Hybrid engine versus internal combustion engine. It combines in. Uh, the, the combustion engines come in, hybrid engines, and it's, it's not full replacement, but you just drag along. And you have a robust resilience. Well, robust resilience, you can see that, the, for example, the EVs versus the gasoline. And that is very important because it will take a long time. We all know that EV will eventually replace the gasoline car. However, the gasoline car has infrastructure that will take a long time before the EV recharging infrastructure will come into picture and before it's being replaced. And that can take 20, 30 years. Okay? 
And I think that's the rest is for you to take a look and see how it can apply to your, your technologies or your industries. Now, there's this, this concept that if you as an emerging technology is not sitting on existing infrastructure or existing ecosystem, then you have to build your own ecosystem, like EV, right? EV is not going to sit on the gasoline infrastructure, and therefore the EV needs charging station. And therefore there's a... But how can you build a big ecosystem as one, right? So it is really, really difficult. And therefore, there's this concept of a MVE, a minimum viable ecosystem. How does the minimum viable ecosystem come about? Well, simply is you follow the value change. And I can show you a very simple one where you have your product, your project, or your product and your supplier, and you go through intermediary, and finally you meet the end user. And in each intermediary, they ask the supplier, they are complementary product. So you have to map the whole change. But one of the important things is that where is the minimal set that allows the chain to work? You cannot build everything from day one, so you build the minimum set. But when you build the minimum set, you must ensure that wherever change, there are value adds to every individual players. Every part there must be a value add. So for example, if you say, if we add, say, value add is positive, and, and, and if it doesn't have value add, it's negative, then every chain here must be a plus. Every chain here must be a plus. Every chain here must be a plus. So you've got to analyze all the possible induction to ensure their value add. Because if a, any player in the minimal viable ecosystem is negative, then it's no more viable, right? It's called the minimal viable ecosystem because every player has positive value. And that needs a lot of analysis and uh, design. Well, a lot of people say, okay, so what's the difference between NVP, which is the minimum viable product, and NVE, which is the minimum viable ecosystem, and which one should we be working on? Now, a lot of people that we are working on now is actually MVP. And MVP is really catering for existing products. All right? So this is what the customer wants, and you come up with an MVP. And therefore, when you have a prototype, all right, you, you basically increase your value proposition, your product features and the performance, and then you go up. Right? That's the part of the MVE where your value proposition is complete. However, if you, if you do not have an ecosystem, or you need the ecosystem to support your new emerging technologies, then the preference is always to not to improve your products earlier, but to get the skill up earlier through the commercialization, through your MVE, and then you expand slowly by improving your products until the whole thing is ready for mass rollout. So the MVP versus the MVE, and it all depends on what's the strategy. Are you tapping on the existing ecosystem? or you need a new ecosystem for your emerging technologies.